One. In the last video about mole-to-mole -mole conversion in stoichiometry problems, we took up how to convert the given substance A to substance B, moles of that, using what we call the mole ratio, which will come from the balanced chemical equation, specifically the coefficients in it. Now, we will be going to the next type of conversion, which will deal of moles to mass or mass to mole conversions. In this case, what if we will be given moles of substance A and you are asked to get the mass of substance B and then relate it to density later on? Or it can be the other way around. What if you're given the mass of the given and then get the moles of another substance that you're looking for? So how do we approach this kind of problem? So this problem will be a two-step method of calculating it. It's going to be, if you're given mole of A, you have to convert it first to mole of B using the mole ratio, which I showed in the previous video. And then once we got already the mole of B, we can readily convert it to the mass of B because we can already um, relate mole to mass with the molar mass of B. Recall that the molar mass can be taken from the periodic table. That's the mass of all the elements that constitute your substance. So that's molar mass of B. If we're doing the reverse, what if we're given the mass of a certain substance and we want to get the mole of another substance? So it's going to be the same, but the first conversion will be molar mass because you need to um, cancel out the gram given and then generate the mole of that substance and then convert it to the substance the mole of the substance you're looking for using the mole ratio and so let's apply this problem what if we're given this problem a combination reaction of aluminum and oxygen gas and you generate aluminum oxide solid so before we begin any stoichiometric problem, you know that you need to balance your equation properly. So balancing this equation will give us coefficients of 4 for aluminum, 3 for oxygen gas, and 2 for aluminum oxide. Take note that these numbers are used as a mole ratio. They do not take part in the calculation of molar mass, only for the mole ratio. So let's relate this equation to the problem. How many moles of oxygen gas react from 450 grams of aluminum? So first thing is we need to know what are we given. So we're given 4.50 grams of aluminum and we are asked for the moles of oxygen gas. So there should be only two, two substances involved in the problem, the given and the required. So the given, that's where we begin, the 4.50 grams of aluminum. So we're given grams, so that means we begin with a mass. And then we have to look for the moles of another substance, which is oxygen. So we have to pass by converting our grams of aluminum to moles aluminum. Then we will use the mole ratio of aluminum and oxygen gas so we can get the moles of O2. So let's show that in the computation now. So we write always the given first. So the given is 4.50 grams of aluminum. Then we multiply it to the molar mass of aluminum. The molar mass of aluminum is 26.98 grams for every one mole. So we put the one mole aluminum on top because we need to cancel out our gram unit of aluminum next so we're done with this step the molar mass of b next is we will multiply it to the mole ratio of aluminum and the one we're looking for which is oxygen gas so where do we get mole ratio again we get it from the coefficient so the coefficients of aluminum is four and three for oxygen so where will we put the 4 and the 3? Since we want to get rid of the moles of aluminum and get moles of O2, so we put the 4 below, 4 for aluminum, so that's 4 moles of aluminum, and then the 3 moles of O2 on top. So looking at this, 
looking at this solution, you know that grams aluminum will cancel out. That's really our first target to cancel that out. Then moles aluminum will also cancel out. Therefore, we are left with three moles of O2. So putting this in the calculator, we will get the answer to be 0.13 moles of O2. So that's our answer. Our answer is 0.13 mole of O2. Therefore, there are 0.13 or there is 0.13 mole of oxygen gas that is needed to react with your aluminum, whatever is the amount of that, so that we can produce the desired 4.50 grams of aluminum. So this is how you do two conversion factors from mass to mole. And if you're doing the reverse, mole to mass, that means you just reverse the process and that means this one will reverse. Whatever is below will be on top and the one on top will be in the denominator. So the, the, the thing here is you must be able to cancel what you are, what you don't need and arrive at what is required. Let's now proceed to the second example. What if we relate our mass to density? So we will extend our conversion. For the last problem, we had mole A to mass B or mass B to mole A. Now, we will extend. We can only link density from mass, so not with a mole. So you have to get the mass first. And of course, if it's about mass of B, you must be able to have the volume of B so that you can get the density. Okay, so to continue, sorry for the, for the pause. If you are to get density of B, remember, density is mass over volume. So you need to get the mass. If ever you're given the volume, then you can calculate for the density. Or if density is given and the mass is also known, then you can get the volume of substance B. So that means it can be an extension problem of stoichiometry if ever density is involved. So let's apply that process now in this problem of still the same aluminum oxide. So it says that in this problem, there are three moles of aluminum that we acted with oxygen gas. So you're given three moles of aluminum that we acted with your oxygen gas. How many grams, so the first question is how many grams of aluminum oxide are produced in the reaction? So this is a mole to mass problem. So you have to get the grams. And then second question is, given the density of aluminum oxide to be 3.69 grams per cubic centimeter, determine the volume of this amount of aluminum oxide. So there are two things. But we can't calculate for the volume, remember here, the volume, if we don't know the mass yet. So we have to get the grams first and then use the density and the mass to get the volume. So let's show that solution here. So we begin always with our given. The given here is 3.00 moles of aluminum. So the next thing is because we're given mole, then we have mole ratio between A and B. Our A is aluminum, the given. So you look at the coefficient, it's 4. So it should be below so we can cancel out aluminum. So 4 moles aluminum. And then the one on top is oxygen. So the oxygen is has a coefficient of 3, so that is 3 moles of O2. So we're done with mole ratio. Next is we go to molar mass. So right after, uh, sorry, this is Al2O3. Let me erase that. Not O2, but Al2O3. Because that's the one that is required. So going back, it's between aluminum and aluminum oxide, so it should be 4 moles aluminum, and then... 2 moles of Al2O3, okay? Next is we proceed. So right after the mole ratio between aluminum and aluminum oxide is we get the molar mass of B. In this case, our B is aluminum oxide. So going to the periodic table, the one mole should be below because molar mass is always one mole. The mass of one mole of Al2O3, the mass is 101.96 grams. So we cancel out mole Al2O3 and moles Al. We will now get the answer to be 152.94 
grams of Al2O3. And so, getting the density or the volume, volume is equal to mass over density. So, putting in that mass of the density value, the answer will be 41.45.